So we have an OBGYN question here. A 37-year-old woman gravitated to PAR1 at 36 weeks gestation, and that's preterm, is admitted to the hospital after she was found to have fetal growth restriction, which means an estimated fetal weight below the 10th percentile. She has a six-year history of mild chronic essential hypertension, so that's a possible cause, controlled with beta-adrenergic blocking agents that were discontinued at eight weeks gestation because they're contraindicated in pregnancy. At 10 weeks gestation, a 24-hour urine collection shows a protein concentration of 50 mg, so she only has mild proteinuria. Creatinine clearance is good. Ultra, so it's not preeclampsia, it's just essential hypertension. Ultrasonography and amniocentesis at 18 weeks gestation showed no abnormalities. Estimated fetal weight was at the 50th percentile. So until the end of the second trimester, guys, this woman had normal fetal growth. And that's really important in diagnosing or determining the cause of FGR. Had it been something inherent in the fetus, like an infection or chromosomal abnormality, it would have started early on. But the fact that she stayed until the end of the 18th week and the baby was growing normally at the 50th percentile indicates that the problem is really uterine placental insufficiency. The problem is in her chronic hypertension causing this fetal growth restriction. Her temperature today is 36.6. All vitals are normal, as you can see here, even her blood pressure, and a fundal height of 30 centimeters. Now, that's the problem here. She's at 36 weeks gestation. We're expecting a fundal height that is within two weeks. So, let's say from 34 to 38. Hers is 30, which is much below the expected. So that is a true FGR. Now, is it asymmetric FGR or is it symmetric FGR is the next question. Now that I diagnose this is fetal growth restriction or small for gestational age, is it asymmetric or symmetric? Because this gives me an idea about the possible cause. I've already guessed the possible cause and that will most likely cause asymmetric FGR. Let's see. Ultrasonography shows a fetal head circumference consistent in size with a 35-week gestation. So it's within this number. Amazing. That means that the baby's head is growing normally. If I measure here the biparietal diameter on ultrasound, I'm going to see that the baby's head is consistent with her uh, gestational age, which is 36 or 35 or whatever as long as it's within two rather the abdominal circumference is consistent in size with the 30 week gestation so it looks like this baby's head was growing normally but his abdomen the inside uh, the internal organs of his abdomen the abdominal fat and muscle were all compromised regarding growth and so this must be an asymmetric type and asymmetric fetal growth restriction usually occurs beyond the second trimester. It usually happens in the third trimester. And it would usually be caused by uteroplacental insufficiency. Something has to do with the mother not being able to supply enough blood for the growth rate to continue normally. And so what happens is that the body compromises growth of less important organs like the fat, muscle, the abdominal organs. Um, it will compromise it in order to allow growth of the more important organs like the brain. And that is why it shunts most of the blood that is already insufficient. It will shunt most of it to the brain, to the head, to the heart, in order to ensure that the baby lives. Okay, so the estimated fetal weight is at the ninth percentile, which further confirms below 10th. SGA, which to the fong is the most appropriate test to determine the risk of intrauterine fetal demise because at one point blood may be even insufficient for the brain and heart and the baby can die. So what can we do as a next step would be Doppler ultrasonography of the umbilical artery. This is the way by which I can determine the actual cause. If there's any abnormality with Doppler of the umbilical artery, it indicates that the problem is from the placenta. 
and that has already been confirmed uh, by the asymmetric FGR we see. Rather, if the problem started early on in pregnancy because of a chromosomal abnormality in the baby, because of an infection, because of drugs or toxins the mother was taking, uh, she was taking early on, it will cause the entire growth to be affected, including the head, because brain growth finishes by 18 weeks gestation. And so if anything started before this date, it will affect the brain and the rest of the body. Rather, if anything starts after this date, then the brain will grow normally and the rest of the body will not. And that confirms that the problem is from the placenta because this woman has chronic hypertension. I hope this makes sense.